Good afternoon. Today in session four, we're going to be reviewing overhead radiation shielding. It's kind of a confusing field. There's a lot of confusion that I see in the shelters that are out there. The information that I'm going to be using for shielding is coming from a couple of different places. One is ENW. This is the Bible in the industry for nuclear, Bible in the world for effects of nuclear weapons. Uh, so some of that shielding uh, will be coming from the, the data listed in, in, in ENW. Some of the data will be also be used from uh, the, NB, the uh, National Bureau of Standards Structure Shielding. Um, and some will be from the Radiation Russian Civil Defense ma Manual. Uh, the Russian manuals are really wonderful. They've got, uh, they've got a complete program. Um, and they've been doing this for a long time. So what we have here, when a nuclear weapon detonates, you've got five types of radiation. The alpha, which is shielded by only a piece of paper, so that's not an issue for us. Beta, which is <clears throat> shielded by uh, wood or anything very simple. We're not really concerned about that. And x-ray <clears throat> is very short. Uh, it's not really an issue either. We're really an issue. Uh, what, what's concerning us in a shelter is gamma, and neutron. Neutron has a 60 second duration. Gamma's got a 30 day duration. So these are the two that we're going to be addressing with shielding inside a shelter overhead. When a nuclear weapon detonates, in this case as a surface burst, you've got neutron radiation in a very short radius. And you'll see that in some of the tables. The fallout comes up. It does go upwind a little bit maybe five ten miles and most of it goes goes downwind so this gamma radiation from fallout is an issue the neutron radiation which lasts 60 seconds is also an issue but this is the mechanics of the of, of the wave and different materials shield different types of radiation so over here we have neutron radiation three and a half inches of lead will reduce the radiation to half Two inches of steel will, will reduce the radiation level to half. 4.7 inches of earth will reduce that neutron radiation to half. Over here we have gamma. So over here, 0.8 inches of lead reduces that gamma to half. 1.2 inches of steel reduces gamma radiation to half. Or over here for neutron, it takes two inches to reduce it to half. And over here, 5.5 inches of earth reduces gamma radiation to half. So these are these are half value layers. In ENW, they 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 build the layers into one tenth, what would reduce it to one tenth, but the increments are too big. So I use the half value layer system. The radiation, the the, the gamma por portion of this, this is a, a hundred kiloton and a one megaton. You can see there's not a big difference, even though that one megaton is ten times the size of the hundred kiloton. They all come down. This is radiation decay, and by the end of the 30 days, it's basically back to normal. The protection factor, which was never intended to be used for underground shelters, by the way, the, the protection factor is a fraction of what gets through the shielding. So a, prote a protection factor of 100 is the fraction. It's 100th of the outside dose. A, a protection factor of 12,600 is one 12,600th of the outside dose. And here's our data. We were originally designing a shelter for one atmosphere, 15 PSI, which happens to be at 0.7 miles from a 100 kiloton weapon. At that pressure and that distance, here's your radiation data, 15,000 rems neutron, 9,554 REMS gamma, initial gamma is 4,500. So here's, here's our data that we're gonna use to design our shielding. Now what you wanna shield depends on the type of radiation and the material. So in this case, we have choices, lead, steel, concrete, earth, and wood. Earth is by far the cheapest, there's no getting around it. 
But if you want to, and here's our protection factor, if you want to reduce the outside dose in, in, in your shelter to half, protection factor two is one half, you can use 3.5 inches of lead or you can use 4.7 inches of earth. For fallout radiation, you can use two inches of steel or you can use 4.7 inches of, of earth. Oh, sorry, 5.5 inches of Earth for, for gamma, 4.7 inches of Earth for neutron. So you can you can choose these. Um, most of the time, you would have uh, protection factors that are uh, un, that are listed that will give you not more than 25 rems inside the shelter. So we're talking about the distance of Earth above the shelter here. So you would have one rating here. If this is 12 inches of concrete, you would decide what the what the protection factor is for that. Add it to this earth, and you'd also have to measure to the if you have a rib structure like this, a geometric structure. This is a Cat 25. This is this designed for this is a 40 psi shelter, so it's very close to ground zero. But you would use the depth at the crown of this rib. So you're not going to use it at the bottom. You're going to use it at the crown right here. And that's where you would take that measurement from. Same thing here. This is a an Earth Comp 60. Uh, this is uh, this has about eight and a half feet of Earth over the top here, but the radiation shielding down here would not be based on the distance from here up to the surface. So the so the, the protection factor is a ratio. Just remember to put one in front of the number. Protection factor two. It's one by two, one half. If you want to approximate it for gamma, not for neutron, but for gamma, you can take 550 as a constant divided by the pounds per cubic foot of your shielding material, and that'll give you a, that'll give you a rough idea. Now, what I've done here, and th these are all in, in the in the in the, in the POP book. Uh, this is gamma doses for a one megaton surface burst, uh, and here's your here's your shielding, and here's your earth depth. There's 44 inches inside the shelter. At 0.9 miles, you're going to get 86 rems. Too high. If you go to the neutron dose, if you get 42 inches, 47, well, let's say 47, inside the shelter at 0.9 miles, you're going to get 55 rems. Still too high. So you have to add those two together. But what I've done to make it easy is I've combined the radiation from the neutron and the gamma dose, so you can just go to one table. Um, and th this is um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, here's your earth depth. If you put five feet and a half inch of earth over the top of the shelter, and you're one mile away, you're going to have six rems coming in from overhead. One mile, eight psi. Here's your doses. And 16 and a half is, is six, and that's fine. Just remember, that's not the total dose inside the shelter. You've got radiation that can come into the shelter from the entranceway. I've seen a number of shelters where they've got great rate overhead radiation shielding, but they've got two entranceways on it that, that are big that are walk-in, and it puts them over the 25 rem. So it, it's it it's this is a, a factor, but you want the total radiation in the shelter from the entranceway, the the air ducts, and the entranceway. Uh, to not be over 25. I usually like to do it uh, not over 10, but that's that's how you get the total rims in the in the uh, shelter. So this is one useful table. You can see what's in the green is acceptable. Um, radiation sickness occurs in these areas that are that are tan, and death within two weeks for these areas that are in orange. And this is in POP. It's a very useful table.